Welcome back. When I designed this home theater, I wanted to have a really cool fiber optic star ceiling. I built a fairly large recess in the ceiling with the intent to replicate the feel of looking up at the night sky. After I completed the room, it occurred to me that the opening was far too large for a single fiber optic kit. I went through my layout drawings and figured I had to break this area up into installable and removable sections. With a working area of roughly 17 feet by 4.5 feet, I could pull this off in three sections. Here I take my layout and start designing the sections. I want to keep materials at a minimum and chose 2 by 3 framing lumber as the framework. The final weight of the optical panels should not require anything more than that. To create some dimension, I install the framework a few inches into the recess so that the final project looks as if it's outside the room. Installing the framework, I use a stud finder to make sure each screw is secured. It would suck donkey balls having the sky fall on your head. The cross beams are attached using the Craig pocket hole system and some industrial adhesive. Here is some wood getting drilled by not me. Stupid me, I got lazy towards the end of this construction and didn't take the time to install a proper electrical outlet in the recess to plug in the fiber optics. Instead, I bought this crazy extension cord that has three inline outlets. I was able to provide power to each section without running several extension cords. Because I don't have an outlet up there, I had to pop a hole through the server room and ran it down the wall and plugged it in there. Having split the area into three, I need to use fiber optic kits that have enough strands to fill each panel. Sparing you the complexities and the algorithms involved in calculating such things, I thought around a thousand lights would look pretty. Jumping on the Amazon, I start scouting for some options. After days of searching, I settle on a kit with around 360 lights. It has RGB color and can be controlled through an app on my phone. I bought three kits and the link is in the description. There are no actual panels the size I need at the lumber store. Like everything else, I have to build them. Going back to AutoCAD, I throw some ideas around and settle on cutting custom sizes out of full sheets of 4 foot by 8 foot underlayment plywood. It's cheap and thin and weighs very little. I need two sheets per section and have to join them together to make one bigger piece. To prevent sagging where the seam is, I place a 2 by 3 framing stud loaded with construction adhesive down the middle. Then I line the entire plank with furring strips loaded with more construction adhesive. I clamp it all together and let it set overnight. I repeat this step two more times. This creates a super rigid board that is lightweight. Once the panels are set, I draw out some quadrants on the back sides of the panels to help divide the amount of stars evenly. With the help of my wife, using a red marker we randomly place specific amounts of red dots in each quadrant. Now that the three sections are assembled and pre-drilled, it's time to apply the triple black velvet. I purchased several rolls of this velvet, not only to black out the star ceiling, but to black out the entire theater room. I will cover that in another video. To get the velvet to stay on the panel, we roll on industrial strength double-sided adhesive. Once all the strips are down, we peel off the backing and carefully put down the velvet. Next, the panel must be carefully flipped over to access the holes we made. Before feeding the fiber optic strands, I secure the edges by running a staple gun over the velvet to tighten it up. Naturally, the fiber optic kit must be tested before committing it to the panel. I find a spot to place the device and start feeding the strands through the holes. You can't just put the strand through. You have to pierce the adhesive layer and velvet with something like a thick needle, then immediately insert the fiber optic before the hole seals up. Just keep doing this for the next few years until it's done. Every optic gets a dab of Elmer's glue to hold it in place. After all the points are glued, I let it rest overnight. With the panel rested overnight, all of the strands need to be snipped. If you trim off the optic right at the panel, the light will be more of a small pinpoint. If you trim the optic just above the surface, leaving some sticking out, the light will be brighter and larger. It's good to trim all the optics as inconsistently as possible. With the panel completed, it's time to place it in the ceiling. Using black construction screws, I zip a few around the entire perimeter using the frame I installed earlier as the mounting point. Plug in the optics and check above the panel. It looks like there's good clearance between the optics and the finished ceiling. I'll go ahead and install the remaining panels, being sure to plug in the fiber optic kits along the way. 
As I examine the finished project, I can see some imperfections in the velvet once I blast 4000 watts of light at them. Otherwise, they are blacker than black and no normal amount of light will show that there are panels up there. Not even movies can expose these panels, they are so black. With all the panels installed, I can simply control them from the free app on my Android device. If you appreciate the work I'm sharing, please consider using one of the Amazon links in the product description below. Even if you don't buy something in my link, Amazon will still throw me a bone for whatever you purchase. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'm surprised how many viewers watch this stuff but never subscribe. Come on, do it! Till next time.